The reason that I became a speaker and a presentation skills coach can be found its original root when I was six years old. It's October of 1969. The lights are off in Mrs. North's first grade class. You can hear the rain pelting the window in the steel roof. It's nap time. All the kids are resting their heads on their desks. Well, all but one. That would be me. I'm standing on top of my desk because earlier that day during indoor recess, Mrs. North had walked into the room unexpectedly and said, well, Michael, since you like standing on your desk so much and getting attention, I'm going to let you do it during nap time so everyone can see you. At the time, I was a bit of a ham, and I, my first thought was, well, this will be great. I'll get to have fun with all my friends, and, and I'll still get to make them laugh. And that's not what happened. When nap time started, I was told, get on your desk now. And I'm standing there by myself in the middle of the classroom. And my friends aren't sleeping, and they're also not laughing with me. They're laughing at me. <laughs> Why Mrs. North didn't catch any of them doing that, I don't know. But what I do know is that every minute that went by got worse and worse. All I could think was, I just want to get down. I just want to get down. I'll be good. I'll never be bad. I just want to get down. That was the longest 40 minutes of my young life. And when Mrs. North finally said, you can get down now, Michael. I hope you've learned your lesson. I had. I told myself, I will never stand in front of people again. That was awful. And for the next 25 years, I never voluntarily stood in front of another group. But life can be funny sometimes, can't it? Because in the ultimate irony, I became a certified financial planner. And 25 years after that incident, I was told, Michael, you're going to have to go out and give workshops and seminars to attract new clients into our firm. Hmm. Never was comfortable doing that. And I'd forgotten all about the first grade incident, but I knew I wasn't happy and, and comfortable at all standing in front of the group of people. And after I had done three of these workshops, I got called into my boss's office on a Friday afternoon. I sat down, he immediately pulled out a stack of papers and said, Michael, I've been going over the reviews from your workshops. This isn't good. All I can say is after reading through these, you're a lousy speaker. <laughs> Your stories are boring and you're not getting the results. Here's the bottom line. Turn this around in the next 60 days or we're going to have to put you in another position. May even have to let you go. In that moment, I was forced to deal with that fear that I had buried for 25 years. Now the fear of losing my job became much scarier than having to stand in front of people and give a presentation. And that set me on a path in 1994 that led me to be here talking with you on this video. Because in the three decades since, I have discovered several key factors about presentations. Number one, we are naturally wired to be afraid to stand in front of people. It was a survival tool from our ancient ancestors. Secondly, everybody's had a bad experience. Some worse, some not as bad as my first grade experience, but we've all had them in front of a group. And number three, Effective presentations is a learnable skill. Who knew that? I didn't at the time. I thought you were born with the skill or you weren't. Well, on this journey, which has enabled me to meet some of the best speakers in the world, some of the most powerful leaders, some uh, people from the entertainment world, Hollywood and Las Vegas, they have all given me a unique education on the skill of presentations storytelling and how to deliver with charisma and authenticity and with influence. And that's why I'm here. I know the pain of regret of missed opportunities. I know the humiliation of being embarrassed in front of people. And my whole purpose, my calling is to help people get their message out to the world and do it confidently and effectively. That's why I do what I do. And when we talk, I'm happy to answer any questions you have about me and my background. But more importantly, I want to learn about you. What drives you? What are your motivators for what you do?